So I've done quite a few videos of the ASUS and the Gigabyte updated P55 lineups, but I haven't actually covered the one that MSI did. So they took their original P55 GD80, they added 5. No, what they actually added is SATA 3, which is 6 gigabit per second, as well as USB 3.0, which is 10 times the speed of USB 2.0 at 5 gigabit per second. So that's the most important change. It still features Crossfire, SLI, and OC Genie, as well as the Superpipe and Dr. Moss, just like the P55 GD80, but it does come with these additional updated features. It's a little bit more expensive, but without further ado, let's get into the package. So, oh, it looks like MSI has started including the uh, M connector, which is kind of like the ASUS, um, I think they call it Q connector. Either way, it's an easy way to plug in your front USB and front connectors if you don't have the bunched up, uh, the bunched up block cables. Okay, next we have a Crossfire. Oh, well that's neat. Okay, well they're actually including a Crossfire bridge, I guess because the spacing is more than the standard Crossfire spacing. That's pretty nice. Normally you're only going to get a Crossfire bridge with your video card. Now we have an SLI video cable, so that is something that we definitely need if we are running SLI. I'm kind of rambling here, that's okay. I've got an IDE cable, it's red and yellow, so it's stylish. Next we have two Molex, two SATA connectors, and four red SATA cables with locking connectors. Awesome. Next, we have two USB ports for the back of your case. These are both high-speed USB, not super-speed USB. So that's USB 2.0. Then we've got an I.O. shield. Oh, it looks like they've also added a clear CMOS switch to the back of the board. Thumbs up for that. I love that. Next, we have their uh, V-Check cables. So these cables plug into various spots on the board and allow you to use a multimeter <clears throat> use the multimeter to measure the current voltage. There you go, just like that. MSI explains exactly what it does. Drivers and Utilities DVD, don't use anything on there. Download everything, the latest from the MSI site. A hard disk storage backup and restore utility. Okay, cool. Next we have a quick installation guide, which looks like it's gonna unfold to about the size of the cameraman's office. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that gives you a quick guide to CPU, RAM, uh, SATA and optical installation, or hard drive and optical installation, graphics card installation, uh, front panel. This is the useful stuff, showing you how to hook up your front panel connectors and all that good stuff. Power and some basic BIOS settings. Oh, that's kind of nice. Okay, so that quick installation guide is covered in logos like Autogy SE. Okay, next we have, wow, they have so many accessories. It's Sheesh, okay, so control center guide about MSI's uh, useful motherboard useful software. Okay, that's nice. And then we have uh, Winky, which is their quick on feature. Then we have an OC Genie guide. Okay, wow, they've included so many more little guides versus the original GD80. It's funny that they actually even include an OC Genie guide because OC Genie is by definition a, like a one button <laughs> function. <laughs> Uh, whoa, this is like thick. And there's your user guide in umpteen billion different languages. All right, finally we get down to the board. So let's get this out of here, let's get this out of here, and let's get this baby opened up. So let's get the tape off, there we go. Just kind of pull the motherboard out, being careful not to actually touch the PCB on the back. So I'm actually touching the uh, back plate there. Okay, so the motherboard itself. Like all P55 boards, we are going to find an LGA 1156 socket in the middle. You can see it's got like a black mirrored finish on it, much like EVGA's high-end boards. You can see it's using a LOTS socket, which is the one that is rated for uh, more even contact with the CPU, so you're not going to burn out your CPU and your socket with even extreme overclocking. Okay, we've got a couple stickers on here. One of them is for one second overclocking with OC Genie, and the other one is for uh, Superpipe and Dr. Moss. Okay, let's see what else we got here. So, like all P55 boards, we have support for dual channel DDR3 up to 16 gigs. Then we've got our 24 pin connector and our 8 pin power connectors in their ideal locations along the right hand edge and top left of the board. Next, we've got, oh, this is good. Okay, so we've got our V check. So, this is going to allow us to check our CPU, CPU VTT, RAM, PCH, and then we've got a couple of ground connections so that we can actually check up to two at a time. Next, we've got, oh, okay, we've got our six SATA 2 connectors, so those are all running off of the MSI chipset, our MSI Intel chipset. Then we have SATA 7 and SATA 8, so those are both SATA 3 6.0 gigabit per second connectors. 
Next, we have an additional connector. I don't even know what that's running off of. Probably running off the same J-Micron chipset as this IDE connector here, as well as the, I'm going to go ahead and assume that there's an eSATA port on the back that is also running off it, and it's right there. Okay, so next we've got, oh, these I love. So, oh, they've actually improved this. So you've got your power button, your reset button, and these are touch-sensitive buttons, very cool. And then you've actually got the direct OC buttons, which used to be a physical button, kind of like the OC Genie button here. But now these are touch-sensitive to increase or decrease the base clock. Pretty cool. Then we have three USB 2.0 headers, one FireWire header. There's our CMOS battery. And then here we've got our slots. So it looks like they've actually reduced the number of slots off the GD80, but honestly, I mean, okay, you're gonna install two graphics cards, so you're gonna still be ending up with a PCI slot as well as a PCIe 1X slot, even if you have two double slot graphics cards. So really it's enough expansion options for 99% of people out there. Now they've actually cut down on the heat pipe cooling a little bit, which I can understand because they're adding features. But I mean, really, I would have liked to see something at least as beef as the GD80. I mean, if they're saying it's enough, uh, I mean, look at this thing. It's huge. You've got like this huge heat pipe. You've got all these fins to dissipate heat. Realistically, it's not going to get that hot anyway. So MSI seems to have done a pretty good job there with that thick heat pipe. Now let's go around to the back of the board and have a look at what we got. So we've got two PS2 ports, one for the keyboard, one for the mouse, a clear CMOS switch. I love that. I love having a switch on the back of the board for that. You screw something up, you just press that button and sets everything back to factory defaults. Next, we have optical as well as coaxial audio out. Then we have Firewire, four, six USB 2.0 ports. Remember, this is one of those SATA, eSATA USB combo ports, very cool ports. Then we have two USB 3 ports, two gigabit ethernet as well as 7.1 audio. So this is a fully featured board, SLI Crossfire, the works, and thank you for checking out my unboxing of the P55 GD85.